Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice. Big treat for everybody tonight here on the Barbarian Hour. We are going to have the head coach at Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. Is it at Edwardsville, Coach? Yeah, S-I-U-E. Okay. So S-I-U-E, the Cougars, ninth-year head coach, Jeremy Spates. Coach Spates, how are we doing? Doing pretty well. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man. Awesome to have you on. And uh, now I was able to, to get your number from the bus stash, from the bus, <laughs> from, from, from your college uh, teammate, Mark Bader. Uh, he was pretty willingly uh, – he gave that number up pretty easy. I thought I was going to have to uh, send him a Venmo or something, but I was able to get a hold of you from uh, – are you and Mark the same age? Are we all the same age? Are you a 98 high school grad? I'm a, I'm a 98 high school grad, but I'm uh... – older than mark he always lets me know about that what's your birthday are you 79 i'm 78 december december 7 okay yeah. so i'm okay. may 31st of 79 yeah so we're both 98 but i was usually the oldest kid in the class but finally i met someone older than me i was old yeah <laughs> yeah okay so you're a 98 grad is it norman high school norman high okay so norman high just real quick this is your ninth year Mm -hmm. It's Southern Illinois, Edwardsville, right? Where where did you start out at after? Because you went to Mizzou. You were an All-American at Mizzou. What year were you yeah. an All-American at Mizzou? Uh, 04. 04. So that was your? Senior. Senior year. Yep. OU, or I'm sorry, your dad was the coach at OU. You were an All-American for Brian Smith at Mizzou, correct? Yep. Did you guys place of head of Oklahoma your senior year? Oh, man, I don't know what we placed. We had three All-Americans, and I actually wrestled the OU guy in my last match. Um, so, Jeff, Jeff Ek Ekloff. Right, Jeff. Wait, your dad had to coach against you in your last college match. So, my dad wouldn't coach against me. He would, especially at tournaments, he would have just have the assistant sit in the corner. But, yeah, I wrestled an OU guy. So, it was Rod Jones and Barry Weldon, I think, were in uh, – Jeff's corner for that one. How'd it go? I won. You won? Okay. That's good. That's good. I'm sure your dad was excited for you, right? Yeah, he was excited. And Jeff was a freshman All-American, so Jeff still had a really nice year in the tournament. Yeah, that's that's always good. And and yeah, that's kind of a win-win for everybody there. Let's just be honest on that. Who yep. won your weight? Uh, it was uh... – I put so you mad. on the spot. I put you on the spot. First no, off, what weight? What weight were it was, you? It was Jesse Jansen. Jansen, one of the, so you were forty nine as a senior. What's that? Yeah, forty one forty nine. Yeah. Okay. So yep. Jansen won the weight. Who did he beat in the finals? Do you remember? Esposito, who beat me in the quarters. And then who did you have to beat in the blood round? <laughs> I beat Storniolo. You beat Sterny? Yep. And, did, he, and... did he have that sweet moule? <laughs> Not at the time. Not at the time. But I actually just talked to Storning tonight because we're going up to Northwestern Saturday and wrestling them. So wait a minute, where was he when you beat him? What he was at Penn State. He so me Penn and Storning State. were friends already through some camps, and we had done some camps together. And then he beat me in national duels in the we wrestled Penn State in the semis, and then I beat him back all, uh, blood round. And then he wrestled for your dad, didn't he? And then, uh, yep, uh, we he wrestled for my dad, and I ended up going back and coaching him his last three years. That is a wild, 
<laughs> I did not realize. That's wild. Did he have the sweet mullet? Uh, no, he the mullet was new. That was a Northwestern, or maybe when uh, when he was at Old Dominion. Yeah, that might have been an ODU thing, but bit. I think you're right. I think it's a Northwestern thing, but yeah. he could have had that in Norfolk for a, for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wild. So you beat Sterney in the round of 12. Then who did you have to wrestle in the next round? Then I wrestled Shufelt, who we were like, I was seven and six against Shufelt. If it went the distance, I won. If he pinned me, I, I lost. <laughs> okay. How'd I go? <laughs> Uh, well, I won that one. Okay. Then who would you have next? In the, was uh, it Conti Semis then? Then Conti Semis, yeah. So I lost to Torella, who I had beat in Vegas pretty pretty easily. And he was, you know, uh, Ryan was younger, but I think he was a sophomore that year maybe. Okay. But he, he had my number at, uh, at NCAAs. Oh, he got me. So opposite frames, too, because he's like a, a short jack dude, and you're like this long, lanky guy. <laughs> right? Yep. Who were yep. the guys that were all Americans with you at Missouri your senior year in 2004? It was me, Kenny Burleson at 57, and then uh, Ben at 74, and Ben was a finalist. Who did Ben wrestle in the finals that year? Lost Pendleton? to Pendleton. Yeah. Jeez, oh, peace. Pendleton just had his number. Oh, my I God. I think Ben got him once. Ben beat him in the Big 12 finals one year, didn't he? Yeah, I think it was the Big 12 finals. But yeah. Pendleton was just too solid for – Ben's funk, and he was older too. You know, it was his junior, senior years. Pendleton was really good, man. Yeah, he was really good. I really liked uh, ninety-six kilo Pendleton. That was my favorite Pendleton. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought he was really good at ninety-six kilos, but it, it, you know that guy was good, and he and he had Askren's number. Like you said, he was just like almost like too wily of a vet for for uh, for Ben, and he was stronger too, right? Yeah. Yeah, Ben, those first couple of years was not that big for the weight class. Okay, so was Bader your 25-pounder? So He's Bader, an 03 grad, though. He's an 03 grad, right? Uh, yeah, my he was 33 my first two years. Okay. And then he went down to 25. Bader's a scrappy little guy. Bader was tough. Bader was tough, and he's a lot stronger. He was my lifting partner a lot of times, which is embarrassing for me being a 49-pounder, but – uh, lifting with the 25 pounder, but he's strong. <laughs> Bader, Bader's strong. I've had to beat him up in a couple uh -huh. hotel rooms. <laughs> I just sent him this video of uh, him and I in Columbus in like 2014, <laughs> where uh, we were in this horrible hotel, like <laughs> awful, like cigarette burns everywhere. We didn't find any needles or prophylactics or anything. You know, it wasn't any of that that business, but. Him and I just like wrestled for like 20 minutes. My nephew had like a GoPro and filmed it. I'll have to send it to you when I'm done here. <laughs> We're beating each other up. He's like in his underwear. I'm beating him up. It's great. I'll send it to you. It's not really for the internet. I'll just send it to you. Okay. I've, I've never had any hotel wrestling matches with Bader. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prerequisite. No, uh, I, I, I got I, stuck with him and uh, not. Okay. That's a, that's a bad way. Joe met this girl, that's his wife now, when we were in London in 2012, and it was just like Bader and I were bros for the next, like, 10 days. We, like, slept in this flat, and the Floriani brothers were there, and then they had their track people there, and a couple other other people. And it was like, Bader was, he was my, like, uh, I just rolled with Bader, man. He, <laughs> it was so much fun. I had a blast with him, and Joe was out you know, whining and dining and, uh, you know, courting this uh, person who ended up, you know, they have two kids now. So yeah. <laughs> who left London and uh, moved over here with them. But uh, it worked out for Joe, I guess, right? Yes. Bader and I really didn't get much out of it. <laughs> <laughs> this friendship, this blossoming a, friendship. A, a blossoming, a great friendship, right? Oh, man, that guy smells. <laughs> that guy smells. That Mark Bader is a smelly, smelly guy. Hey, were you at the reunion recently in Wisconsin? At Ben's, yeah, that was a blast. Did you see Joe's injury? Joe got an injury, didn't he? I was up front and center for that. <laughs> well, when you, you told me about it, I'm like, Joe, you've got to watch it. When you hand fight on a slip and slide that has a, a pretty good <laughs> angle on it. What, states, yet. what could go wrong? What could go wrong? What could go wrong on a slip and slide? Probably some beverages involved. 
probably a pretty steep pitch to it. What could go wrong hand fighting with some beverages on a steep pitch on a slip and slide? What could go wrong? Hand fighting, hard hand. I mean, nothing, right? Why would you try to hand fight the bus on a slip and slide? He was a trooper, though. <laughs> Afterwards, we, we, got our, we were playing around a disc, and it started downpouring. And Ben had the slip and slide for the kids. But when it starts downpouring and you're around the disc, it's interrupted. What are you going to do? So uh, all the dads uh, decided to slip and slide and then... Joe decided a good idea to hand fight with Vader. And... What's he doing? <laughs> what are you, Joe, Joe Williamson, what are you doing? Stop it. Like I said, he was a trooper after. He's like, I don't think I'm going to play disc, but I'll like drive around in the golf cart. And, like... did, did he get a concussion <laughs> or separate his shoulder? He did something, right? It was, yeah, it was. Uh, was One labrum or separate, something crazy. No, he separated his collarbone or broke oh, his collarbone. Oh, that's what he broke his collarbone. <laughs> Oh, my God. Come on, Joe. Grow up. It's almost like you're a father, too. Come on. What are you doing? But um, and does Ben have a full uh, – does he have a full disc golf course on his property? Yeah, it's amazing. It's a, it's a full course plus a couple holes. I forget. I think it's maybe 22. Um, it's crazy. It's amazing. Can I just tell you, the videos of him clearing his lot – were awful and terrifying and i'm like a tree i'm not a tree expert okay let's let's get that out of the way i'm not gonna sit here and act like i'm an arborist or a lumberjack or a person who you know fell you know i'm not i'm not felling any 180 foot douglas firs or anything like that but what ben was doing did you see any of the videos I, i've seen some of the videos and i've seen i've seen ben at work with the with, with some power tools and and listen, yeah. I get he's a freak. I get it. Like Ben Askren's a freak. We can all agree on that. Everybody gets it, right? But <laughs> if you drop a tree on yourself, it's going to kill you. Well, the funny part, at the bottom of the slip and slide, there were some trees. So we had to put this uh, blow-up pool so it would kind of catch you as you, so you didn't run into the trees when it bottomed out. And so Ben's like looking at Amy, his wife, all serious, and he's like, we got to take out those trees down there. We can't have that next year. Like, we got to keep the slip and slide going. She's like, so now you're just going to take out those trees? And he's like, well, I mean, it's in the way. <laughs> Listen, I like that too. I'm a, I'm a tree guy. I got, you know, five acres of woods here <laughs> and I have all the tools and I just, I just got a new tractor. I was actually telling I've, I've uh, Jason Pirelli about it. I've got seen a new tractor on social media. <laughs> oh my God. I got a John Deere, uh, 25 horsepower. It's a tractor actually. I like it. Does Ben Askren have a tractor? He's got a gator and then a golf cart. No, no, no. You didn't. You didn't answer no. my question. No. Does he Ben Askren have a tractor? No, I don't believe. I don't. Why does Zeb tractor. Miller have a tractor with a front end loader and Ben Askren does not? <laughs> You're calling him out. Is that what? This oh, is? I, thousand percent. Get a tractor, dude. Come on. Oh, hey. Day after I bought the tractor. Day after I bought the John Deere. John Deere went on strike. So yep. he probably oh. won't be buying a John Deere tractor. <laughs> you got good timing then. <laughs> well, like someone told me, um, one of my old college roommates, the guys I wrestled with in college was like, oh yeah, they just, John Deere just went on strike. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, John Deere just went on strike. He's like, you kind of bought that at the right time. And it was like total dumb luck, <laughs> total dumb luck. It was like a supply chain issue. Actually, I went to buy a still chainsaw, this 500 i chainsaw, which is like, one of the top of the line chainsaws that still has. And uh, I almost walked out with a gator. And then I was like, I don't need a gator. I have a four wheeler already. I have a nice four wheeler, like a new four wheeler. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need another. Why do I need another thing to, to ride around on? I would be almost be like Ben Askren having a, a, a gator and having a go. I, I don't need that. I don't need that. I'm just saying, I don't need that. So you need I need to lift. So I need to lift logs and do man stuff, Spades. So I okay. got a tractor. I've got some woods in the back. I don't have. Oh, yeah. a I don't have you... a tractor yet, though. I saw something. You posted a video one time. Are you? Is there a river in your backyard? I got a, a pond. A pond. Yeah. I've seen a video of it before. It's actually pretty sweet back there. We have a. It's a nice setup. Yeah. If it wasn't dark, I sh I'd show you. But how much yeah. do you own? How much land? Well, it's it's actually not a ton of land. What it is, is our neighborhood, we're kind of on a uh, dead end. There's uh, 
the road kind of goes around this way and then it dead ends this way. And then there's uh, an American Legion and there's like a little bingo hall and they have a bar and an outdoor restaurant. Um, and then there's a nine hole golf course. So Wait, the this is, that's, that's where you live. It, my backyard. So the, that's the, wood, the woods go down into the pond and then the Legion actually owns the woods right around my, I own some of it, but not much. Yeah, but they don't they don't go in that woods uh, they don't they're not on this side and i'm buddies with the guys at the legion and they they like us cleaning up the woods and like keeping it nice back there i mow it and everything so i got a fire pit and they like it that's cool man good yeah. for you and then how far are you from your like facility like five miles oh my god you yeah a pretty good setup man. yeah it takes me 10 minutes tops and how many kids do you have just one just one what do you have Four and a half, baby girl. Baby dad. girl. Yep. Hashtag girl dad over here. It is definitely hashtag girl dad. Had to learn a lot. Tell me the biggest lot. thing you learned about being hashtag girl dad. Oh, man. She's just all over the place. It's just, you know, she's bouncing around and she's, you know, no, no rhyme or reason. <laughs> a lot of energy is what you're saying. Uh-huh. Yeah. What so about how, you? You got you got two boys, right? I have two boys. I have a four and a five. So your daughter is in between right, in my between. two sons. Yep. My one just turned four. My son Thomas turned four last, the end of last month. So two weeks ago he turned four. Okay. So okay, here's what you can tell me this because you've seen a lot of like little boys, you know, guys that you've been around, friends, guys you've coached with the whole nine yards, right? My buddy, uh, the co-host Jared Opper that works with me on the show. Uh, he said that he, the biggest, he has four girls. He has two twin daughters are like, I think eight or nine. Um, he says that boys just like dive into everything and girls are more cautious. Is your daughter, it doesn't sound like your daughter's like cautious. No, she's, well, she's cautious about a couple of things, but she's more dive in. Like we were at, uh, during COVID, we were at a pool and she had the floaties on. She couldn't swim yet. She can swim now. But, uh, like, I took the floaties off, and I was turned around to get her towel, and I heard a splash, and she was bobbing. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> like, she she gets after it. That's terrifying. Oh, uh, yeah. Is it the pond the pond near your house a pond you swim in, or just no, the pond that you, like, got turtles and you fish in it? There's a, yeah, there's a beaver that has taken out, he took out a big tree that took out part of the dam. So the water level is real low uh, right now. This beaver is huge. Uh, yeah, do, beavers will, they'll jack you up. You don't want to yeah. mess with, you know that, right? That's a real thing. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with the beaver. No, <laughs> seriously. They're, yeah. they're, they're kind of like, the, you come up on a beaver and it's scared or it has young with it, look out. They take down trees for with their teeth. No, yeah, I, no, it's a real thing. That's what they do. So yeah, I would I would keep her out of the pond. So no, we okay. don't go we don't go in the pond. Last oh last God. winter it was cool. It froze over and we went sledding. We can sled right off the back porch down by the pond. So that was that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Wow, great setup out there in Edwardsville for you, huh? Yeah. How yeah. far are because you guys were the host for the last time the NCAs was in. No, Mizzou has a stranglehold on it because when I was... But you're closer. You're way closer. We're, we're closer, but they've done it for so long, um, and they've got the connection. I think the first year that they co-hosted it was my senior year in, okay. in 04. It was in St. Louis, and I know Coach Smith and the staff at Missouri did a lot to help with it, and so they've, they've always been the co-host. So, okay, you guys are hot. What are you, 45 minutes from St. Louis? From the arena, 30. Oh, you're that close? Yeah. How far are you from the airport? 30 as well. So you're we're, situated in a really we're good right spot. right off of 270. Yeah, like we're off of 270, 55 runs through here, uh, 64. Like we're kind of central to everything. So if you look at it, you got schools like App State. You got schools like Ohio University. They're not easy to get to. Once no. you get to them, they're pretty awesome, right? Yeah. You guys are really easy to get to. You're right off I-70. Yeah. You're right next to the airport, third, half hour away from the airport in St. Louis. And that, I don't know if people make that association. You know what I mean? They hear Southern Illinois, yeah, Edwardsville. Oh, where's that? But, like, easy. It's half hour from the arch, right? You're, not far, you're right there from the gateway to the west, right? 
you can see the arch from campus. I mean, that's, so. yeah, that, that's an easy way to describe it, though. Would you say that? Yeah, yeah. And in fairness, I didn't know when, when they called me uh, to apply. You know, I didn't know where SIUE was either. I knew we had wrestled them in college, but they had come to Missouri. Okay, so you, you are there, you're in your ninth year. Yep. Talk about the progression. Talk about your moves. So you go to okay. Let's start. Let's start it. Your dad actually was a coach at Cornell, correct? Yep. My, so my dad, I was born in Pennsylvania. We moved around a little bit. Uh, oh, Toledo, Ohio. Uh, what were you doing in Toledo? Year. So my dad did sales. He was with Pitney Bowes for a couple of years, and then okay. he he hated it and wanted to get back into wrestling. And so uh, he was volunteer pit for one year assistant at west point for three head coach at cornell for five and then oklahoma for i think 18. so your dad was replaced at cornell by rob cole yeah so my dad that's wild dude that is so wild i got one for you i was laughing me and my dad were talking uh the other day and his staff one year at cornell was him rob cole brian smith and doug dake no freaking way are you serious that is our wow and doug dake was right out of kent state then yep that is amazing oh my god that was your dad's staff at cornell uh i think just for one year because i think when when brian came up when coach smith came up he was there for just two years and then that then my dad left rob moved up brian moved up so it, it's crazy to think about it. Um, you did the opposite of what Jason Brelli did, right? Jason Brelli wrestled for his dad mm -hmm. uh, at Central Michigan. You did not wrestle for your dad. And I've never heard a bad thing about you not wrestling for your dad. I've never heard it from anybody. I've never heard it about it being a bad situation. So you and your dad obviously have a good relationship. Is that is that safe to say? Oh, yeah. He, was, he encouraged me to go because uh, Michael Leitner had placed second as a sophomore at 41 and I was probably going to be a 41 pounder. So he was like, I think you need to go somewhere where you'll start right away and get in the lineup and get matches. So. And you were the start of Brian Smith's coaching career, right? Cause he took over in like 2000, 99, 2000. Is that right? Uh, I was his first recruiting class. So, so Bader, you're the start of it. yeah, Bader, Kevin Heron and those guys, uh, there was nine guys left on the team from that year. And then we Smith brought in 18 of us. Uh, we had 18 freshmen. That's crazy. And I bet you, I think I wrestled in a duel against you at the Virginia duels. Uh, so that would have been like 03? Uh, 01, 02. Yeah, 01, 02. 01, 02. Yeah, because we, yeah, because we went, let me think, the first year we didn't, so that would have been 2000. So 01 and 02, I think we went to Virginia duels. Yeah. Yeah, I wrestled in the duel against. I lost to some guy who was an undersized ninety-seven pounder, St Stone or something like that. Uh, Ryan or Dante Stone. It was one of those guys, yeah. and then the uh, the D Oregon heavyweight was your heavyweight, and our guy beat him. Uh, Bar Barker. White. Oh, Scott Barker. Yeah, Barker lost. Oh, that was the year Barker was at heavyweight. Yes, that was that was. Oh one then. Yeah. So one. Yeah. Barker lost to Jim Sweater. Oh, okay. And he was and he was only like two hundred and five pounds and Jim Sweater cut to two eighty five. <laughs> I was like I, I remember Scott telling me and Smith the one day he was like, Man, I've gotten so much worse and we're like You think you were better in high school? And he was like, Oh yeah, I was way better in high school. And we're like, You're in college wrestling up a weight. Like <laughs> What do you mean you think you've gotten worse? Like, you're competing with D1 heavyweights. Like, <laughs> he had a pretty good year at heavyweight. Too. Yeah, that guy transferred to Oregon, and he made the NCAA finals, didn't he, at 97? He made the finals at Mizzou, and then Smith kicked him off the team. And then uh, he went to Oregon. And then he went to Oregon. And I think he all american at Oregon. That's so crazy. in the finals. That well, The guy was an NCAA finalist for Mizzou. He kicked him off the – I think that says a lot about Brian Smith because a lot yes. of people would not do that. Yes. They would not, they would, they would keep someone, they would, they just, they would not do that because everybody wants to win. 
Yeah. And that was, uh, you know what? It was funny because Jason Brawley actually, he mentioned Brian Smith. He's like, we need more leaders like Brian Smith. Yeah. And he talked about that. And obviously you know that. Um, just talk about the recruiting process. First off, how did you do at Norman? What was your what were your finishes at the state tournament at Norman High? I was uh, third, first, third. So you're a one-time Oklahoma State champ. Yep. That is unreal, dude. Who beat you those year, those third years? The years you got third, who was the champ and the runner-up? Uh, so Skyler Holman was my sophomore year. I always used to lose to Skyler. I, I only beat him one time. He was tough. Uh, he just had my number. And then my sophomore year, or my senior year, I lost to uh, Matt Dodgen. Who was tough? He was a couple times. Wait, there. is that one of the Dodgen twins? Yep. They're they're Iowa Central guys, and then they went to like Central Oklahoma, right? Uh, yep. What do they own now? They own something. They own a company. Do they? I'm not sure. Yeah, they own a company. The Dodgen twins own a company. Dodgen was tough, but honestly, I felt like I was. I I really think I was better than him. He was the state champ from the year before at 19 and I had won it at 12 we were wrestling 30 or maybe he was at 26 the year before whatever but we were wrestling 130 and I just gave him way too much respect and lost a close one I should have I should were, were you always big and lanky no I was tiny in high school so I wrestled uh 100 in Oklahoma as a freshman the weight was 100 then I went uh one one oh six, then one twelve as a junior, and then thirty as a senior, finally. And then forty one, okay. forty nine in college. So I didn't start growing until like my junior year in high school. Where's the length come from? The long I don't know. I'm one of the taller ones in my family. Yeah, I've got an uncle who's fairly tall and a couple cousins that are, but yeah, I'm the tallest one on in both my immediate families, I think, except for maybe one cousin. How many siblings do you have? I have three. What do you have? O older sister, my brother, Justin, who you probably remember, he was a stud in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, and then my sister, Jenny, is younger. Okay. Where did Justin go? He went to Mizzou, uh, and he was not round of 12, but round before as a true freshman, and then uh, redshirted, wrestled part of the next year, and then school is not for him. Not for, not for, Ju not yeah. for, okay, got it. So Justin was not a, not a college guy. No, and it was a shame because he was really, really good. He did your sister, did your sisters go to Oklahoma? Uh, my older sister went to OU, yeah. Okay, so that, did they get the fringe benefit there? Did they get, did your dad get like a tuition waiver? Yeah, for, she got, I, I don't remember exactly what it was. But, but something like that, right? Or, yeah. Gotcha. So, okay. so my sister, and this is a funny story. My sister was really, really smart. We're living in, in uh, Dryden outside of uh, Cornell. She's planning on going to Cornell. She graduates from Dryden High, like 94, I think she graduated. Went to Venezuela to do an exchange for an, a year. Mid-year, my dad takes the, or I guess towards the end of the year, dad takes the Oklahoma job. She can no longer afford to go to Cornell where she would have had the, and she would have gotten in. Um, and so she had to go to Oklahoma. She was not real thrilled when my dad. Oh my God. One. Jack Speech, you pulled the rug out from underneath your daughter's feet. What are you doing here? So That's she, did, crazy. She, she did get her graduate from Penn State. So she's all right. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> oh man. Jack Speech, what are you doing? Come on, buddy. Uh, what does Jack Spates do now? What's your dad? What's the old man do? He's he's mostly retired, but he still does a lot. I mean, that's what made him a great coach is he's on the go. So he does a lot with uh, his church and FCA in Oklahoma. Um, he still does our camp. He does that. Uh, they do that um, leadership academy through the NWCA. They do one in Edwardsville. He does that every year, the one down at the convention. Um, he is an announcer uh, for Fox Sports when they do the OU matches. So he's still in Norman? Yep. yep. Gotcha. So your dad's in Norman. It's like because you know, it's like really cool because I recently had Jason Borelli on, and I like to compare it because there's so much comparison between father and son coaches who are both yeah. D1 coaches. And what's crazy about them is I don't think you and your – did you and your dad, you didn't have any overlap as head coaches, did you? 
Uh, no, no. Yeah, those he guys retired like two years before I started. I think the Borellis are thirteen years simultaneously head coaches in this. In is the that really? Game. I didn't realize that. That's Isn't that crazy? crazy? Well, when that you said crazy. you've been in there for nine years, and Jason Borelli told me he was the head coach at Stanford for thirteen. Was, was he thirteen? Like, oh yeah. No, it blew my mind because he was assistant one year. McCoy left. Mm. And he bumped right into it. Oh yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is. That's wild. Okay, so Norman High School, you're a one-time state champ, three-time yeah. state placer. Your dad says, "Hey, I got Michael Leitner. I think you should go somewhere where where you can start right away." And Brian Smith steps into the picture. What did it for you at Mizzou? Because it was right before Mizzou really started rolling, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, what happened was I was, I didn't get, to, I didn't take many visits. A few coaches called and were like, Hey, if you're going to go somewhere else, you know, uh, let us know. But everybody kind of figured I was going to OU. I had taken a visit to West Virginia. I really liked that. But so I wanted to go to OU. My dad talked to me cause I was so small and not, you know, physically developed. He was like, I think you should do a gray shirt. So I did the gray shirt at Oklahoma Worked out in the back room with Sammy Henson, Tony Perler were in the freestyle club then. And then uh, Whit Durden, Bo Manis were redshirting. So I was working out with a bunch of those guys. Dude, your gray uh, shirt was a was just a slaughterhouse. I'm sorry. It was, it was, it was oh awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, How did, <laughs> did you get takedowns? It was, it was great. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Sammy beat me up a lot. Tony definitely beat me up a lot. But, uh, oh yeah, no, it was God. good. And I went to a few tournaments, went to Missouri Valley, went to uh, uh, Sunkist, went to a couple different tournaments. So did did pretty well that year, had a decent gray shirt year. And then Smith called, you know, hey, I'm starting the program at Missouri. Obviously, I had a relationship with them from the past. And um, I was still looking at West Virginia again. Uh, I talked to Coach and told him I was open and uh, probably would have went there. And they had just got uh, Mike Torriero, so they had just put a lot of money into 41. And Smith was like, or uh, Turnbull was like, let me try to figure it out money-wise. And then Smith called and was like, hey, we're starting this. And my big thing was, who am I going to work out with? And he was like, well, we got a couple guys, you know, Bader and a few of those guys were in there already. And then he was like, you know, uh, Pritz was coming in. He's like, I, I'll work out. Pritz works out. He's like, we'll bring in good people. And he did. J.P. Reese and, and Kenny Burleson were both 41 pounders our freshman year and came in. So went on the visit, really liked it, liked the guys. It's like, all right, let's do it. So you go there. Okay. When you, yeah, when you said 2004, I was like, wait a minute. I, I figured there had to be an Olympic red shirt or a gray shirt. Yeah. Cause it used to be a lot easier to Olympic red shirt. You could be like a Fargo Greco all American and cadets. And like, that was like one of the criteria. It's a lot harder to Olympic red shirt now, isn't it? Uh, I, I'm not sure the criteria now. Uh, I would I would have been close. I played in Fargo three years. Uh, you university. know what I'm saying? You then yeah. you would have been able to Olympic redshirt. That's my point. Yeah. Now, no. now, not so much. I think it's like a top three in the. You got to be. It's what you have Is to it? do. Yeah. It, it's because I remember it substantially changed to to be an Olympic redshirt. So it's harder to Olympic redshirt. And then when you got guys that are doing the foreign thing, like when you got Michich and you've got a, uh, I mean, right. You those guys so are many, obviously so many the, guys now. Yeah, they're their number ones. Yeah. So those guys can do that. Uh, Seabass can do it. But you do got to qualify your country. I, I think is there's a prerequisite for that too. I mean, yeah. it's it's a lot harder to, to Olympic redshirt now. Yeah. So okay. You I get, feel like I feel like wrestling's a lot harder than it was 20 years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I yeah. just feel like the level is is. I mean wrestling was great back then not to say it but it just keeps getting better and better well look at the freshmen that come in in the rtcs and how develop how college ready all the guys are and exactly your, your statement's correct i agree with yeah. your statement i don't have an argument for your statement <laughs> your statement is correct it, it's wrestling it, it, wrestling is better yeah. and you got like a diaka mahalas who comes in you got an aj ferrari who comes in you know yeah. we could name we could pick through it all day guys are just really good yeah 
college ready, you know, when they come in. I mean, I remember when Kellen Russell came in and he was the number one seed as a, I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. it, they're ready to go. They're, they're ready to go. And it's because they have higher level partners, RTCs. There's a, there's a lot to the equation. Would you agree? Oh, uh, internet, just yeah. videos on flow yep. wrestling on all these different yep. websites. I mean, you know, you didn't have that. You couldn't wa instantly watch any wrestling match in the country, any tournament in the country. You know, I got a thing of VHSs over here. <laughs> yeah. It's wild, yeah. And that's how you. That's how you and your dad did it. Uh -huh. Think about how your dad had to recruit from Ithaca, New York, dude. Think about that. <laughs> Ithaca, New York, in the eighties. Come on. That's a that's a, that's a fair point. I was telling Daryl the other day uh, we were talking about stuff, and I was like, it took me a while to realize how innovative my dad was in wrestling and recruiting and just everything. You know, a lot of the things that he was doing back then, coaches and programs are doing now. It's like he was doing that back then, and there was not a. I mean, there was other people doing it for sure, but there wasn't a big blueprint and it's, it's wild and it's wild to think what he did now. to innovate it's it's yeah. really crazy and then to go to oklahoma and then you get you get the big 12 budget and then it's oklahoma right mm -hmm. that's different that's a game changer for him and that's a job you had to take i mean yep. when you get the opportunity to, to take a step up like that you have to do it yeah ultimately what you guys are in this for you want to get to the highest level where you can guide a program and win an NCAA title. You can do that all day, every year at Oklahoma. Yep. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, people are like, ah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You can win at Oklahoma. You he, can win the NCAA title at Oklahoma. He didn't win a title, but – I, I, Hold on. I get second, that. I get second that. Second and thir third and fourth place. You I know. get that, but you get my point. Like, But, yes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you're getting a trophy, yeah. you're there to win it. If yeah. you're a trophy team – if things go differently that weekend, and then obviously, you know, you run into the great 80s teams of Iowa, you run into the last decade of Penn State, you're going to have teams like that that are generational, right? That are all-time great teams, right? Yep. If you're winning a trophy, you're usually in the mix at some point in the three days to win the tournament. Yep. I mean, right? Unless it's like these all-time great teams and they score – five six guys in the finals five chance i mean come on you're not gonna win that we get that yeah. <laughs> but you can win at oklahoma do you, you agree with that statement yes yeah i mean they they're like what third or fourth on all-time number of championships seven yes you can win at oklahoma i think you can win at iowa state i think you can win i think you can still win at these places that you used to win you yep. can still win there yep i agree that's just my opinion i agree is it going to be pretty hard at SIUE uh, to to win an NCAA title? Yeah, we get that. We yeah. get that, that Ohio University and App State and Campbell and you know that they're going to have a hard time. We know that Gardner Webb is going to have a hard time. You know, we just want you want to get all Americans. You want to be competitive. You want to be able to get guys degrees, and then you want to be able to make the sport of wrestling better, make the program better, right? That's ultimately the goal when, with yep. these jobs, right? Do you do you think your administration understands that? Yeah, yeah, I do. We've got a great administration. Yeah, and then um, being in the Mid American Conference, right? Uh, what's that been like for you, Coach Spates? That's been nice. We were in the SoCon before, and uh, that was good, but it was a lot of travel. It was far for us, and we actually wrestled a lot in Mac schools anyway because they would come out and not want to just come out and wrestle Missouri you know, we're right on the way back. So we wrestled Central Michigan every two years, Buffalo, I think Kent State came out one year. So we we wrestled a lot of Mac schools anyway. So you guys, you know, they're they're giving you support. You just got another new assistant coach in Daryl Thomas, right? Associate head coach. He's the associate head. Ooh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And he is actually from Edwardsville, isn't he? He's from Edwardsville. So that's crazy i thought he was a chicagoland guy but he's an edwards go edwardsville he's guy from right? edwardsville uh right down the road he wrestled for coach wagner who's the head coach at uh edwardsville high school and and john uh wrestled for siue and was part of the 80s teams that were studs and nice yeah that's 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 i like to hear that that's a, that's a cool hire when a guy can go back to his hometown and coach big time division one wrestling in the mid-american conference i like that i like i think yeah. that's a great move for him and he's he uh, went to Illinois, right? He was Illinois, yeah. Yeah. So I look at it. That's awesome. And then 
my guy. You got to know that 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 Shan the man is my guy. Tay Shan's I, a good a good dude. He's a really good guy, mm -hmm. and um, he actually left Kent State and came to you guys. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we we were super lucky there. Uh, I guess two summers ago, and he's he's doing grad school. He's he's awesome. He's awesome. So. Do you know what he was doing when they did the whole COVID like furlough and all that? Do you know what, what, what Tayshan was doing? Landscaping. And he was riding his bike to like a rubber factory in like Akron. He was working in a rubber factory too. He was I working he was in a factory. Ready. He was Wasn't working. He, he was doing landscaping and. Uh, yes. Landscaping. He was doing both. He was, he, the dude, <laughs> he, Yes. I think something happened to his uh, – he had like an SUV, I want to say. Uh, and something happened to it. The dude was riding his bike to Akron to a factory and working. That's amazing. It might not – okay, hold on. It might not have been a rubber factory. It was some type of automotive or okay. some factory where he was riding his bike from Kent, Ohio to Akron to work in a factory. I didn't know that. He is a workhorse. That is – listen to me. That is nodding, not wanting to fail because what would most people do? Mm -hmm. they wouldn't do that i can tell you that much so yeah. when he told me that i was, it blew my mind it i was like because most that generation's not built like that no it's not and that guy is i love it i love that i was like oh yeah and then immediately i'm like dude how can we help you you know i want to know and then he was like oh i'm good don't worry about me and i was like okay because i was yeah, i was looking to rent to him and then they you know that weird furlough thing got a lot of people man it, it was crazy. It was crazy. And it was, like I said, perfect time for us. Uh, Tyshawn Williams, our 49 pounder, um, had come over to get some his NCAA stuff. Uh, and we were looking for somebody and he's like, Hey, uh, did Tayshan call you or did I give you Tayshan's number? And I was like, no. And he's like, well, yeah, he might be interested in a grad assistant. And I was like, come on, man, what's up? I was like, give me his number right now before you leave. <laughs> and so he got it and worked out. That's awesome, man. I like to see stuff like that work out for the better, especially for a guy like that who I think, I think the world of Tayshan, you know that oh, obviously. He, he's awesome. Awesome guy. And then who is your, uh, who is your volunteer assistant? Uh, Logan Taylor. So Logan uh, wrestled, well, a couple weights here. He was 41 through 57. He was a senior my freshman year here, or freshman, but he was a senior my first year here. Your first year, uh, okay. And, and so then he's been uh, on staff for, he's actually the longest tenured, uh, longer than me, because he, he's been here since, did Logan come, 09, I think is when he came as a freshman. That guy's been there a minute. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Yep, and he's, he's awesome, too. You got a good setup. I like that. Yeah, I, I just yeah. like your setup in general. I like where you're situated in the country. I like how easy travel is for you, right? Yep. Uh, what would you say? And you guys have a really nice facility too, don't you? We actually just we blew out a wall and we're expanding our room. Uh, so we'll be in there. Actually, they told me today they get December eighth. So it's you're you're expanding your facility. Yeah, we had we had two mats and a little workout closet kind of area. And now we'll have uh, three mats and then a 20 by 42 space with like cardio and some lounge area and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. You double the size of your room in your area. Yeah. It's all, with the lounge double. area, right? Yep. Yeah. It's going to wow. be Wow. Yeah. They're going to have it done by December 8th? Yep. yep. Your people are not working on COVID time charts. <laughs> we... <laughs> We were very, I mean, like everybody, we had COVID issues, but we were very fortunate during COVID. We, we don't have football, which sometimes is a hindrance, but we weren't losing football money like so many of these mid-major mid schools. Uh, we, our enrollment didn't go down, you know, it stayed pretty steady. So we work off fees. So we, we were pretty lucky. That's awesome. I love hearing that because so much everything else was the opposite everywhere else was the opposite everybody had a, a you know it was it was like a it just sucked man it was a horrible time in in our society's time and i'm glad to hear that you guys kind of had you were able to hold the line right you yeah our, to, our administration and, and university in general 
they we do well like if you look at our tuition compared to other schools things like that they do a good job keeping things down keeping costs down operating you know doing things at a high level with not a crazy high budget so you know, most everybody else was in retreat though you know what i mean most everybody else was losing scholarships most everybody else was you know losing facilities they were losing coaches there was furloughs there was all this other stuff and you guys you guys went the opposite way that's awesome yeah no it, it was good and and like i said we weren't you know, we had issues too. We were testing, we were sitting out, we, we lost some budget dollars, but they did a really good job of weathering the storm. Yeah. Kent and I guess State, being pre prepared before the storm. Kent state lost half their scholarships. They got them back though. I know they had it. Rough. it Jimmy tough. had it. Jimmy had it rough. There was a few, I know. Central Sen had it Central tough. They lost an assistant. Yeah. Central lost an assistant. Yeah. I yep. mean, it was tough. I mean, that, that's just too off the top of my head. There's way more, right? Obviously. Yeah. I mean, yep. it, it, it's crazy. But um, talking Mid-American Conference, right? You guys went from the SOCON to the Mid-American Conference. Uh, it, it is going to be a very different Mid-American Conference tournament this year. Obviously, your alma mater is no longer in the MAC. They, went, they migrated back to the Big 12. So yep. someone knew's winning your conference this year, right? Not yep. not that Mizzou had a stranglehold on it for strangle stranglehold for about uh, nine seasons, I want to say. I think it was nine years. Yep. Yeah, nine in a row. Brian Smith, you know, they had an excellent. They got an excellent program. Great team. Great team coming back. A lot of parity. A lot's up for grabs, right? Anyone can win the title this year. Um, you got Northern Illinois tougher than nails. Obviously, Central's the favorite right now. Cleveland State, I was saw, was second in a preseason poll. I mean, there's some really good teams in the conference. Ohio University, always tough. But but what do you think about your guys' chances this year to to throw your your hat in the mix and, and potentially bring home a, a title? Uh felt really good about it coming into the year uh honestly we're we're a little banged up um we're gonna we're gonna lose some people um justin Ruff, ruffin who's you know arguably our best guy three-time national qualifier justin's gonna redshirt he was injured last year at the mac and had some complications on his shoulder so um so we'll see we've got a lot of new guys in the lineup um and like i said we're for being the beginning of the season, normally you're pretty healthy, but we're pretty banged up right now. So uh, we'll see, but we feel like we can compete with, with every team in the Mac. I like Justin Ruffin. I like the guy from Georgia, right? That guy's tough. Yep. Listen, I'm afraid of his dad. His dad's intense. He's got one of the most intense dads I've ever met. Justin LA Ruffin, is awesome. You know, he, uh, yeah. Awesome guy. Justin Ruffin is, he's a, that guy's a thoroughbred. That guy is a guy. He can do what Rizzadori did, what Rizzadori did, right? Yep. Yep. Justin did, I it, is did I say it right? Rizzadori. Rizzadori, yep. okay. Yep. Rizzadori was All-American for you in 17? Yep. At 174, he had one heck of a tournament, man. But mm -hmm. I, listen, like, he can be your next guy to do that, right? Not that you don't have a guy who can do it this year, but, I mean, odds on favorite. That guy, Justin Ruffin, is, he's legit. He's, he's a blue chipper, right? Yep. Yep, Justin's a stud. What do you do when you to, to get more guys like that to, to entice them to come there? How do you get more recruits like that? And how do you get more more reservatories? How do you get more Justin Ruffins? How do you get those guys on campus? Well, I think we've done a lot of the things. You know, obviously we just talked about the new room, Ed and Daryl, who's a big time coach that's been at a lot of big time programs. Uh and then we built a lot of things like our RTC. Um, that was something, you know, we didn't do a lot of freestyle Greco. Now we've had like this past summer, we had two guys place at the U.S. Open, one in freestyle, one in Greco, um, having guys placing at universities, things like that. So uh, just really getting all those things in place. And then for us, getting people down here, seeing the campus, seeing all the, you know, because we're expanding the wrestling room, but they've also done a ton of things on campus in, in the eight years that I've been there. They've added uh, just a ton of different buildings, athletic facilities, everything. So um, you know, doing those things and then just finding the right kids, you know, find, finding the Justin Ruffins. What do you look for when you're looking for a recruit? I've been doing these things. These I do combines. I do camps. I do all this other stuff, right? I go to tournaments. I go to everything. What are you looking for at, whether it be a combine, you go watch a kid practice, you go to a tournament. What is, 
what is Coach Spates looking for when he's looking for a guy who can come and change his program at uh, SIU? Yeah. You know, it, it's a little bit different because I feel like, you know, kids are in different areas. You know, they might be three sport athletes and they're just a freak athlete. You know, we're, we're looking at that. They might be a wrestler who's concentrated on wrestling and been a hammer the whole time, like a Justin Ruffin, you know. Uh, so, but we're looking for athletes. We want kids that want to compete, you know, when you're first watching video, if a guy's not attacking attacking even if he's not scoring you know if he's not attacking then there's something to be said there uh we like top i i've always uh had fun with guys with, that are good on top um feel like that's a good way to put up bonus points score a lot of points hopefully get pins uh things like that so i wouldn't say it's one specific thing but um looking for guys that can wrestle you know uh looking at footwork looking at hips looking at strength looking at possible development you know I think there's a lot of things that go into it so being like kind of a late bloomer is how you kind of described yourself right I was you physically you know you were little you weren't very physically developed and strong mm -hmm. do you can you kind of do you have a feeling for guys like that when you see a guy like man I think he can develop how I develop do you see that a lot do you have I a good a good eye for that I think I definitely do. And then, you know, being at a school that, you know, is like you mentioned, not in Oklahoma, not in Iowa State, a historical program, you know, we're not always going to get those top, top blue chippers. So, you know, we got to develop some kids too. We, we always want to get those guys and that's the guys we're going after, but we got to do some of both. You know, in talking about this, you know, you guys already wrestled some competitions. I was trying to get to everybody, all the Mac coaches before, any competitions happen, but th there's a lot of you. Yeah. <laughs> Quite frankly, there's a lot of you. But, you know, when I look at it, you know, right out of the gate, we saw some opens, there were some duels. It's a long season, man. The yes. high school teams in Ohio have not even started official practice yet. You guys are a week deep into the season competition wise. How do you keep the guy? Dude, this is, it's a, it's not a horse race. This is a marathon. How do yeah. you keep guys focused uh, after you guys, you guys have a tough start to the season? How do you yeah. keep guys and how do you refocus guys and get them ready to go? Well, at this point, it was not very hard. Our guys were had a lot higher expectations than what we wrestled. And we had a lot of guys out this weekend, but still, um, we know we're a lot better than that. So our guys came back. Uh, we gave Monday off, but came back on Tuesday and had just laser sharp focus. So that was easy. Now we do have to maintain it through <laughs> the next four months. So uh, that is that is not easy, you know, and especially if you put together a couple of losses. A lot of guys, especially if you're new to a D1 lineup, you haven't lost like that probably most of your career, you know. So um, it it's tough in the long run, but for right now, it's it's been pretty easy. Our guys were fired up. They're like, hey, we're ready to go next weekend. We got it clean up a little bit, get in a little bit of better shape, you know, um, but we're ready to roll. Do you think people don't get how tough D1 wrestling is? Do you think people like, I think media people are snobs. I think people that, that, that the, all they care about is, Oh, do they have all Americans? Right. Sure. That, that's the big, that's the standard. You've done it as a coach, right? Mm -hmm. There's some coaches out there in the conference who haven't done it yet. You know, it's tough, man. It's tough to get over that hump. Right. You got it within like five years of taking the job, right? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, because I think I came in in 13, so that sounds right. Yeah, so you got it within like four or five years of taking the job, which, man, it takes a lot of guys 15, 20 years to do that. Were you super relieved to get, you know, that's kind of the big thing, right? Once you get the All-American, it starts to spark. You got to roll. You start rolling from there, right? Yeah. How huge of a relief was that for you when Residori just kind of went off at the NCAAs? That was awesome. That was a lot of fun. And actually, you know, we thought Freddie Rodriguez was going to be our first All-American. He had uh, – what's his name from Campbell that he had, I think, teched in uh, Kreiser? the finals. Yeah. And so you think Freddie's going to be your first All-American, and then Kreiser beats him. Like, you got to be kidding me. And Residori's got Epperly, who, you know, I think was a three-time – returning or two time would have been a three time. Yeah, but he was, he was third and he was third in Madison square garden. 
Yeah, exactly. It's and then really good. And then Rezzy comes out and beats him, and it's like, what? <laughs> so wild, man. So yeah, but we got to get that next one. We uh, we're our whole team, our staff. We're we're hungry for that next one. We're we're not satisfied with seventeen. <laughs> Are, are are we wrong for that though? Are we wrong for that being the measurement? Are we wrong for a team can go zero and sixteen in duels, but if they have an All American, we're fired up about it as media, as parents, as 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 uh, as fans, as alumni. Is, are are we wrong for that? Uh, I I have this uh, debate with my AD uh, Jason Coomer sometimes because he's like, you gotta stop scheduling so tough, and I'm like. Rezzy wrestled five of the eight guys he wrestled at the NCAA tournament throughout the year. I don't care about our record. I mean, I, I want to win. Don't get me wrong, but I want to be on the podium. <laughs> you want to, you have to do wrong. that. I could be wrong, but I want our guys on the podium. I want to be in St. Louis in Detroit. I want to do it. I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. I'm going to put it out there. I just don't think you're wrong. <laughs> Are we wrong? for the expectations and what we do and how we judge programs. Are we wrong? I'm, you know, be, me being a loudmouth media guy. <laughs> Am I wrong for that? You know, and I, and I listen, I get it. You just got to know I get it. I, I do get it. I get like, it's really hard to get an All-American. I yeah. understand that. And I understand it, especially at a mid-major, it's even harder, right? Do you think we're wrong for the judgment on that? On some, well, they haven't had an All American in 16 years. Is that are we wrong for that? I think there's some programs like me and Daryl were talking about NIU, and you know they got a hard time for a long time for not having an All American. But Brian was putting together some good teams up there. Um, so you know, I don't know, but like I said, well, I always say this: you have a great crowd. Like we've had 1,100 people in our gym. We've had some pretty good crowds, you know, for a college dual meet. But outside of the Iowa Penn States, a few of those duels, when are you wrestling in front of 20,000? You're not. Like that, that's a great point. Exactly. You know. And this this goes back to the old days at Olympics and gladiators. Like when are you getting in front of the people? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so I could be wrong. But <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I, I totally get it though. And I don't, I don't like that they give because ultimately the goal and the, the, we want kids to graduate. Yeah. Not yeah. a ton of dudes are going pro in wrestling and the yeah. name, you know, name image likeness, right? That's not, that's affecting like 15 dudes, 10 dudes, right? That's not affecting a lot of people. Well, I will say, I think the good thing in wrestling is programs that are graduating kids that are doing the right things that are winning winning at, at times those coaches aren't getting fired you know <laughs> okay so, i don't know Maybe name, not. name image like this <laughs> listen I, I beat that up a lot i'm sorry i be, i, I kind of you know because i i feel like I, i'm torn right like should i be recognizing programs who are graduating everybody should I only worry about the people who are having all Americans, right? And I, I too, I get it. I get it. I get that yeah. the ultimate goal is to take wrestling, use it as a tool to get through college and advance yourself and create better habits as a person and work ethic and character and ways to help and serve your community. You know, that's ultimately what wrestling's about, right? Yeah. It'd be a better, you know, husband, father, uh, brother, you know, all, all the things that we want people to be. I think that's what wrestling's really about. Yeah, kind of got a wrench thrown in it though, because now we've got the name, image, likeness, and now they can make name, they can make money off their likeness, their name, image, likeness, right? Here's my thing. Here's my here's the problem I have. It's gonna kill the Mid American Conference. It's gonna kill the SoCon. It's gonna kill I don't know anybody who doesn't have a really wealthy alumni base. Because now this is like a self-reporting thing, and they're doing it state by state, right? It's it's definitely crazy. It's uh, we'll see how how it ends up. Um, but, okay, it's crazy, but you know where I'm going here, right? I'm you're going Barbarian Hour podcast, <laughs> and I'm not worried about that. Nil. No, I'm not worried about that. 
That's the, what you're saying. You're going to sponsor our guys. That's what I. That's what I got out of it. I'll talk to Josh Sass. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Alumnus. Okay. So do you know what happened at BYU? Yes. Okay. So BYU, all the walk-ons got hired by a company. Yep. A Utah company, right? A Utah donor, a wealthy donor was like, I'm going to hire every walk-on. You already know the problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. That you already one know I, the problem with that. that you already know I that. See how they could, because that just blatantly, you yes. know, that one yes. I don't understand. Yes. It's crazy. Yeah. But I don't know where they're at in court cases with that. I don't know, but they did it, right? What does that do when you guys got a chance to recruit and, uh, Let's and listen. I'm not saying Iowa and Oklahoma State are doing this, but you you got to throw the two all time great programs out there, right? You just do that. Hypothetically speaking, you guys are in the mix for a guy who's a, a a 12 through 15 guy on Iowa's team, right? That guy can come to you, be the next reservoir. He could be an All American for you. They can just if they have a donor. Hey, we want to get this kid. Can you give him? You know, here's what the cost of attendance is. Here's what everything is. Can you pay him this much a year? You're not going to be able to do that. That's an issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a huge issue. Yeah. Oh, man, it's a nightmare. It's <laughs> making me sick thinking about it. Because it's like, I don't want, I don't want us to be men's gymnastics in the NCAs. That's what I don't want us to be. Yeah, no, that is definitely scary. You understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah, and just the whole college landscape right now with conferences and everything, it's definitely scary. What a mess. Yeah, yeah it makes – and, like, you know, and, and you and I get it. We, you know, we get that RBY. We understand that uh, – we know that Spencer Lee, we know that Gable, we know that those guys and, and Mr. Fast, which those guys are going to make money. Good for those guys, right? But beyond those guys I just named, is anybody else really making money off NIL? In wrestling, in wrestling. What yeah, do I, d- I doubt there's a ton of it. You yeah. know, I get, I, I think guys are going to, you know, put out their shirts and make some money a little bit here and there, that kind of stuff. But Is that going to really move the needle, though? You know what I mean? No, no, no I don't not. think so. It's not going to get a guy uh, above and beyond of what a full ride costs. And now, hold on. Is RBY going to do that? Yeah, RBY has marketed himself. He set himself up like that. He's going into MMA. We know that. Yeah. Did you see that he's not coming back after this year? That was another thing I saw. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. he's not coming. This is his last ride. So Really? I understand that, what, and I get it. I understand that. Two years left? Two years, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's a freshman All-American in Pittsburgh. Okay. Sophomore year, cancel year, but then this, you lose, he lost his sophomore year. Last year, junior year, this year, junior year, next year, senior. Yeah, he lose, next year. So next year, he'd have next year would be his last year. Yeah, and I know you're not worried about what those guys are doing. You're worried about what the Cougars are doing, right? <laughs> I've been in our bubble. <laughs> yeah, you got to do that, right? Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite thing? You know, I asked Jason Borelli this. Um, how are you and your dad different? What's your favorite thing about your dad, and how are you guys different? Uh, we're definitely different. He's more outspoken. He likes to, you know, he's outgoing. I was always more reserved, shy when I was younger. I've got out of the bubble a little bit more now, but, uh, my favorite thing about him, um, we have the spate sense of humor is definitely very fun. He's got, he's the second of seven siblings and, uh, we, we have a good time, uh, with all the cousins and everything so that's that's definitely something and then i always credit him he always taught me how to work hard that's something i always just really appreciated admired you know that's a huge credit man because how you described yourself one-time state champ physically underdeveloped a late bloomer and to do what you did to be with d1 all america you're fifth fifth in 2004 right yep that's incredible man and you beat a really, really talented guy in Coach Storniolo. Yeah. Matt Storniolo was, was the standard, man. That guy was really good. And that's the guy. And think about it. You guys are opposite ends of the spectrum as far as a, a, that guy's a thoroughbred. 
He's one of the best recruits in the country. Yeah, Storney's a beast. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Storney was the he was really good, man. He was excellent. And and for you to be able to beat him, I mean, that just says a lot about how much of a grinder you were. Hey, speaking of which, can we can we get the story on the uh, painting in the background that I that I noticed uh, at the beginning of uh, when, yep. when we locked um, So that one is uh, Dave Schultz beating Rob Cole, and they're both wearing the old fox catcher. It's the red and. They're both wearing the fox catcher because they were fox catcher. And then, uh, so try go, to get that. Go scoop yours up. Go get yours off the wall. Let's uh, see it. All right. Because you got the, you have the article in the background. It's really cool, man. I just, so I tried to get that from my dad for years. So for my graduation uh, gift, he got me this uh, painting. This guy, Bill Waddell, used to do the national champs for OU. And it's from a news article from my 100th win in college. That is so awesome. Are you in the gold Mizzou singlet there? It is the gold Mizzou. That's a sick singlet. I so who are you wrestling the first there? First year we had those. Who are you wrestling there, Spates? That was uh, Northern Illinois, and it was, uh, it was Josh. Oh, it says it in the paper. I love it. You you have it right there. You don't even have to remember. Josh Wooten. Oh, that's Josh Wooten? Yeah. <laughs> Freaking Graham Falcon. Where is he from? He's a Graham guy. Oh, really? He's a Graham Falcon. Oh, I didn't know His that. His mom was the cook for Jeff Jordan's camps for like a couple of Oh, that's funny. That's he crazy. Was young, he was younger, and I felt like he cranked. He did. I uh, tore my meniscus and sprained my MCL, but uh, I felt like he did it on purpose, so I was pissed, and it didn't end well for him. Uh, he got to put on <laughs> a little bit. Huh? He got to put on him a little bit. <laughs> wild crazy yeah, i'm stuff. sure he did i'm sure he didn't do it on purpose but that was my mindset at the time well, i mean <laughs> don't get hurt space don't space dog don't like getting uh getting torqued on who does who likes that who's a masochist that wants to get hurt <laughs> not me not spades come on um ultimately uh where do you guys go right you're at siue how first off how far are you from norman uh, it's eight hours. Oh, it's that close? Yeah, it's not bad because 44, I mentioned the other highways, but 44 runs right through here too. Yeah, so I jump bad. on 44 and right down there. It's an hour flight too. It's great. So oh, wow. that's, the, that's the great thing about Southwest or St. Louis is you have Southwest and we have straight like Cleveland, straight flight, Pittsburgh, New York, Oklahoma. So nice that's 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 what i'm saying that's what, when you live in a hub like you guys do you live in the center of the country mm-hmm. i mean they don't have the ncas there they don't pick it out of a hat they do it because yeah. it's centrally located for everybody yeah and travel is easy there so yep. i mean that's 30 minutes from your campus so that that you know that's a good little tidbit for people to know right but um nice. ultimately where do you guys go from here how do you build a championship culture and you know i guess if if there's something you really want people to know about Southern Illinois at Edwardsville, what is it? Uh, man, it's an awesome place to live. I, I love it. Campus is great. Uh, the town is great. You got, we're a little more in the country. It's not like we're a country small town. We've got everything here, but then you got the city right there. And we're, we're on the brink. I'm, I'm excited about it. We've got everything that we need. Now we just got to continue to bring in a bunch more studs. I love it. And you guys are a part of a really good uh, educational system. What is the educational system? The uh, the educational system which 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 you're in. Uh, oh, I mentioned with the so it's five universities, colleges. So Carbondale was the original, and then we're the second university. We just overtook them in size a couple of years ago. But then there's Springfield Medical, Alton Dental, and then East St. Louis Early, early Childhood. And that's the Southern Illinois University system. System, yeah. Okay. Because then there's like, yours is almost like this subsystem, right? Because then yeah. you've got like, if you look like there's like the SUNY system, there's the it's, UNC it's, system. It's very similar to like the SUNY, yep. Yeah. Exactly. So and it, for people, you know, just to, for reference, right? Because I don't think people get it. Um, it's not what, uh, it's almost like what, it's similar to what Edinburgh Clarion and Cal PA or K, uh, Indiana PA are doing. Yep similar kind of similar and they have their own they still have their own athletic programs and they kind of let them exist um separately right yeah 
Yeah, that's awesome, Coach. I love it. I mean, I'm sold. I got to come visit now. I got to come check it out. Yeah, I come down, come down for a match or something. This new room. We'll talk about, talk more about your sponsorship. <laughs> Listen, do not put words in my mouth. Josh Sashby's gonna lose his mind. He's I'll gonna get you a shirt. His microphone we'll over my head. I'll get you. I'll get you an SIUE shirt. You sponsor like five scholarships. It'll be. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys fully funded? Are you nine point nine? We're pretty close. We're like eight point three, and then good. we make up, we get a lot of academic money, so we're we're pretty well funded. Yeah, you're in a pretty good situation. I like it. Yeah, so. it's not bad. Awesome, man. Well, I, hold on. Now that you're you're putting the barbarian hour out there and trying to say that <laughs> barbarian apparel's got to hook the uh, the cougars up, uh, go check out bar- www.barbarianapparel.com. We got some singlet specials. Check it out, um, Coach. Do you have anything more for me? No, I, I appreciate it. Um, we're excited, uh, like I said, about new coach, new room, and a lot of good things going on. So we're ready to take that next step. Coach, I love it. Thank you for the time. Stick around, okay? All right.